following is a presentation of WGN News. This week on Backstory. Are you ready to be reborn? Behind the door of an Ivy League secret society. You do learn very quickly how important these clubs are, not just socially, but historically speaking. An unlikely member shares his story. Also inside the secretive world of Scientology. The issue is about indoctrination and control and what people are told. We will hear from a journalist who has followed the mysterious movement for more than two decades. And Ike's mystery man. He kept his confidences. He didn't betray people. His closely guarded secret revealed. And the time capsule reveals an Irish celebration. This is Backstory with Larry Potash. Secret societies are a great source for conspiracy theories and Hollywood blockbusters. Legends add to the mystique. One thing is certain, a secret society is about elevating members above others, us versus them. In the Ivy League, secret societies are the elite among the elite, and members often become world leaders. I sat down with one man who is telling his story, and he's not your typical Ivy League secret society member. Shadow societies have existed for centuries. At one time, Christianity was a secret society to avoid Roman persecution. Founding fathers like Washington and Franklin were Freemasons. The Mafia is a secret society. Our membership has its pleasures, its hardships, and sometimes its pain. There are many reasons to join, but at the core is status, favoritism, and power. A toast to the successful progression of skulls. Above any other. Above any other. The movie The Skulls captured the imagination of one of these secret societies, Skull and Bones at Yale University. The film hit the box office in 2000 as a Skull and Bones member was running for office, George W. Bush. Other members included his father and grandfather, as well as Senator John Kerry. Skull and Bones was started in 1832 when people were starting to become suspicious of organizations like the Freemasons. So two men decided to make their college fraternity a secret society. Alfonso Taft, father of President Howard Taft, and a merchant named William Huntington Russell who made his fortune transporting opium. For centuries, secret societies like these were for white men, primarily from established and wealthy families. That is not Ian Smith, one of the few African Americans chosen for one of Harvard's secret societies, the Delphic Club. Why did they pick you? You know, it's been several decades since I was a member of the club or joined the club, and I have no idea why they chose me. I am everything that a club is not. I'm African-American. Uh, I was not wealthy by any stretch of imagination. I come from a working class family. I had no legacy whatsoever at Harvard or in this kind of elite world. I don't know why they chose me, and they don't tell you why they, cho they chose you. Under his dorm room door in 1988, he received an invitation with three blue torches. That card opened a door to a world most never see you do learn very quickly how important these clubs are, not just socially, but historically speaking. And they're very different from fraternities in the sense of they are more formal, uh, they tend to be more elegant, um, they have a lot more money. Money, women, parties, exotic trips, and cars. I remember things that happened in the club that were they brought to the fore now in the environment and the era that we are in, those people who participate in those activities would be held very accountable and would have a negative impact. Plus, secrecy gives an air of prestige. Very few get behind the door of the Delphic. Sure, Ian Smith was a great student and athlete, but he was not like the others. He grew up in a working-class neighborhood in Danbury, Connecticut, with a single mom. You know, I think I was a, a pretty fun guy and, you know, affable. I didn't have a lot of hang-ups, and so I think that the guys just probably liked me. But were you conflicted going in, knowing the history of these groups and how they typically had viewed African-Americans or even people who didn't come 
from the power structure of the East. Yes, for years, these clubs have kept out people like myself, African Americans, people who don't come from money. And so here I was almost feeling like I was betraying my past because I was joining a club that stood for things that either demeaned or didn't represent who, where I came from. And so, yeah, that was problematic for me, but my curiosity won over. Did you justify it by saying, hey, I'm, maybe I can reform this group from the inside? So I felt like I'm not going to sit here and paint myself as a radical, like I had this kind of, you know, revolutionary idea going into these clubs because I was just a kid. But I did feel like, well, maybe if I get in and they realize that guys like me are good guys, even though I'm not rich, and though I'm African-American, that we're good guys and like to hang around with, with, with me and maybe they'll let more in. The Delphic Club is a secret society at Harvard. This is the Delphic Mansion. As you can see, there's no sign on the front of it. Dr. Ian Smith says there's top-notch security here because over the years, people have tried to break in to discover the rare books, artwork, and valuable artifacts that are inside. It's part of the plot of Smith's new book, The Ancient Nine, an elite secret society working within the secret Delphic Club. The story reveals the thoughts and motives behind young men who are already in the competitive world of the Ivy League. For most people who go to a school like Harvard, you're going to do all right, right? And so what kind of leg up does this give you? The intimacy of these clubs allows you to have access to extremely powerful people who are not powerful while you're undergraduates, because you're all undergrads, but when you get out of school and they become the head of different commissions in the government, they become CEOs, they become big partners of law firms, you know, you're dealing with some pretty heavy people and because you're a club member, you have direct access to them. The Delphic was reportedly started by J.P. Morgan, one of the wealthiest and most powerful businessmen in the world in the late 19th century. Some people believe these secret societies are part of a master plan to control world events. The reality is these Ivy League secret societies have generated leaders from Wall Street to Washington, a world that includes banking with dictators or CIA assassinations. That doesn't mean they're driven by some secret handshake from college. As students, some are driven by a thirst for power, others by family legacy. Smith says he was driven primarily by curiosity. I come from the other side of the tracks. And so I was interested to see, you know, how they talk. What do they do on their downtime? What does it look like? Did you find the kids of wealthy families were perhaps not as happy as you would think they would be as a kid who was not wealthy? They were what I expected in the sense of, you know, these elite, very privileged uh, kids uh, who had a very different lifestyle uh, that to me was very surreal. His first novel is somewhat autobiographical and infuses a lesson for the other 99% of young men and women who will never get into an Ivy League school, let alone a secret society. When you are a grounded person and you are confident in who you are and what you are, the environment will not have such an impact on you that you lose the core of your being. The clubs are not affiliated with Harvard. The university has tried to shut them down for not being inclusive. Currently, they've taken their biggest push ever to try to squash these clubs. That is, you can't be a captain of a varsity athletic team. You can't hold a student government position. Uh, and also, they will not give you recommendations for scholarships like the Rhodes Scholar or something like that. They won't give you these referrals and recommendations. So they're trying, but at the end of the day, these clubs, in my opinion, will be around forever because these clubs are independent organizations, whether the university likes them or not. And what about the Ancient Nine, that elite core within a secret society? The Ancient Nine represents a group of anonymous men who are basically a secret society within the secret society. They've been rumored for many, many years. I will not say whether or not they exist. In secret societies, sometimes the secret isn't about the secret, but whether you can keep it. Smith didn't. He didn't give away all the Delphic secrets, but has he said too much? He says he's not worried. The line between corporate networking and world domination is often set in conspiracy theorists' paranoia and Hollywood producers' imagination. <laughs>